Good morning and welcome to St. Philip's Episcopal Church in Rochester, Michigan. We're so glad you're joining us for this online worship service. We hope that uh, if you're a member that you'll take our re-entry survey. It's an opportunity to tell us what you're thinking about when you might be ready to come back for in-person worship. That will help us in our planning as we finalize our preparations to resume worship in our sanctuary. We hope that you also consider giving to our summer uh, capital campaign to support the uh, renovation of our roof, replacing of our roof over the sanctuary and the hallway, and also the installation of a new security system in the main entrance. These uh, projects will be uh, finished by around the beginning of August, and that will be a uh, prelude to our coming back into the building. In the meantime, join us for our online events. We have Zoom Coffee Hour every Sunday at 11 a.m. and also Noonday Prayer Monday through Thursday. We're now taking Fridays off during the summer, but Monday through Thursday, Noonday Prayer at noon. And you can find links to all those services in our weekly email, the epistle, and you can subscribe to that and also find the links on our website, stpfeeds.org. Also, we have outreach opportunities uh, to support our neighbors in need. The Eastern Michigan Fund for Flood Relief, the uh, projects at Rochester Area Neighborhood House, and coming up, it's our next Saturday for volunteering at the Food Pantry. Please do be in touch with Catherine McGee if you can help with that project. And finally, a Bound Together in Pontiac has been offering food and other resources to children in Pontiac. Next Sunday, July 19th, we will not be having our usual YouTube service. I will be on vacation, and you are invited to join with the people of St. David's Episcopal Church in Southfield for their live Zoom service at 10 a.m. You can also join with the National Cathedral for their weekly service, and links uh, to those services will be in the Wednesday and Saturday epistles. And the following Sunday, July 26th, will be our Senior Recognition Sunday. We'll be having a live outdoor service at 9 a.m. We ask that you would bring your own camp chair and umbrella for sun or rain, and to wear your mask and to keep six feet of social distancing. And now we invite you to participate in the service, in the prayers, and in the hymns, and to offer uh, this worship to the glory of God. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah. As the rain and the snow came down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the, the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. The response from Psalm 65 will be said responsively by verse. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vows be performed in Jerusalem. To you that hear prayer shall all flesh come because of their transgressions. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you will blot them out. Happy are they whom you choose and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house, by the holiness of your temple. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the seas that are far away. You make fast the mountains by your power. They are girded about with might. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the waves, and the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You make the dawn and the dusk to sing for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing, and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to their Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his spirit that dwells in you. Hear what the spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no roots, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Gospel today is the sower and the seeds. The famous parable of the sower is a parable that invites us to think about our spiritual lives in light of the image of gardening. Now, I want to share with you that I am a terrible gardener. When we redid our backyard a couple of years ago, we talked with a landscaper and I said to her, I would like a yard that has flowers and plants, but requires no maintenance whatsoever. And I have to tell you why. Because some years ago, I had the dream that I was going to be a great gardener. I researched how to be a gardener. I looked at different plants. Now, I'm not that interested in flowers. What I like is food. So I wanted to grow food, and particularly, I wanted to grow tomatoes. Tomatoes that taste like tomatoes. And so I did a lot of prep work. I had a friend come with his rototiller, and we cleared out a space in our backyard. This was in New York. I tested the pH balance of the soil and added different nutrients and fertilizer. I chose the different types of tomatoes and other vegetables. Uh, zucchini, I don't think you can have a garden in uh, the Northeast without zucchini somehow. And uh, some other vegetables and I think some flowers as well. And planted the seeds and worked on it and just was so excited about what was going to grow. Well, we got about three tomatoes, and then the blight hit. It hit our whole area. It wiped out the whole crop of tomatoes and zucchini and other vegetables, and I was decimated. I was really upset, and so I kind of gave up on my dream of gardening. But I think about that when I read the parable of the sower, and I think about God as the faithful and patient gardener, God who is willing to scatter the seed of the Word of God all over the place. A friend of mine in a meeting recently said, you know, God's percentage was not that great. Only about 25% of the seed bore any fruit whatsoever. Most of it fell in places where it could not produce, either on the hardened path where the birds snatched it away, 
or in the rocky soil where it couldn't dig deep enough to form a good root system, or it was in among the thorns which grew up and choked it. You'll notice there was no mention of blight, but I think blight is part of this, the failure of God's seeds to grow, the failure that I can resonate with as an unsuccessful gardener. Well, there's good news in this story as well, because the 25% of the seeds that hit the good soil produce so abundantly that they more than make up for the failure of the other seeds. They produce 30, 60, even 100 fold. These are amounts that blow your mind if you're a gardener. This is extravagant growth. This is the kind of growth that reminds us of the abundance of God. God, the faithful gardener, God who is planting the seed everywhere and hoping for a good harvest, a harvest of faith. This parable invites me not to meditate on my failures as a gardener exactly, but to meditate on the state of my soil and your soil. How is your soil doing? What kind of soil is it? Is it the kind of soil that has been beaten down into a hardened path that no seed can penetrate? Is it just exhausted? You know, crop rotation was invented because soil can become depleted over time. Even if you're planting and getting good results year after year, eventually your field is going to become depleted of nutrients and it needs to rest. And so the idea of crop rotation came around because sometimes you need a sabbatical. You need time to refresh, time to lie fallow so that God's restorative work can begin anew. Or perhaps you are rocky soil where the seed just can't dig deep enough to find root. Perhaps you're one of those people who is always attracted by the next bright, shiny object. Squirrel! Sometimes I'm like that. I'm interested in everything, and so I can bear fruit in nothing because I'm too distracted. Or perhaps you are like the seed that grew up in the thorns, where the cares of the world or distractions or the lure of privilege or power or money or wealth or whatever it is chokes off the growth that God is trying to bring about. This parable invites us to do a little spade work in our own hearts and minds, to analyze the state of our soil, to take the pH balance. How is that soil doing? To think about, as a careful gardener would, what do I need to do? Do I need to dig up that soil? Does it need more nutrients? Does it need to be cleared of rocks? Does it need to be weeded of those awful thorns or other invasive species? spiritually invasive species. What do we need to do to prepare the ground for God's word to grow deeply in us? There's hope in this story too, as I think about what makes for good soil. It's not predestined. You know, if you are hard soil or rocky soil or thorny soil, it's not got to be that way forever. You can change. The soil can be rejuvenated the ground can become fertile. This came home to me in an image, which I'll share some slides of in a minute. But the image from Southern California, where I grew up, a desert climate of something called a super bloom. It made the news last year because in 2019, there was an amazing super bloom. And what a super bloom is, is when the most God forsaken, barren wilderness, the driest of dry deserts can suddenly explode into life and color and vitality. What happens is this. In the desert climate, there are sometimes events where you'll get enough rain so that the water penetrates that dry ground. And this happens even in a place as dry and dead as Death Valley itself the lowest point in the continental United States, the hottest and driest 
and worst kind of soil you can imagine. But when the conditions are just right, and it can be about every 10 years, the water seeps below that dry surface, surface and finds the seed which had been planted years before and which had just been waiting there in the desert, waiting with its hard shell, waiting for the water to reach it, and when the water reaches it, it blooms. And oh, does it bloom. The whole carpet of the desert floor becomes an absolute quilt of majestic glory. Beautiful wildflowers seizing their opportunity and blooming for all their worth. To me that says, don't give up hope. Do you feel like your soil is dry and dead? Do you feel like your soil is depleted? Do you feel like your soil is just too trampled down? Do you feel like it's too choked with weeds and thorns? Well, God has another answer for you, and that is that seed keeps coming. The Word of God made known to us in the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ which becomes known to us through the gift of the Holy Spirit. That seed keeps being planted in you and in me. Whether there's a blight or not, whether the soil is ready or not, the seed keeps coming. And into your life and into my life and into the life of the world, when the conditions are right, God's Word explodes into beauty and life, giving itself for the life and the salvation of the entire world, bearing fruit abundantly, 30, 60, and 100 fold. So today I invite you to take stock of your soil, to do the work that you need to do as a faithful gardener, to make yourself more ready for God's implanted word, but not to lose hope and to remember that God is showering his love upon you and inviting you, when the time is right, to bloom. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Bonnie, our bishop, Wendell and Stuart, our retired bishops, Eric, Ann, and John, our priests, Lutheran bishops Elizabeth, Donald, and Craig. In the Dominican Republic, for Moises, their bishop, and St. Simons, San Marcos, and St. Titus, Kimani, for our diocesan household, 
remembering especially Holy Faith, Celine, for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, for an end to racism, poverty, and injustice, and for the well-being of all people. I ask your prayers for Donald, our president, Gretchen, our governor, the Congress, Supreme Court, and all our elected local officials, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for our servicemen and women, especially Ryan, Tracy, Stephanie, Dylan, Matthew, Ian, and Dan. For state safety for protesters and police, for those affected by the flooding in central Michigan, for healthcare workers, first responders, all those who are working in public to provide necessary services, and for the, all those affected by the coronavirus. Pray for protection and safety. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. For those on our prayer list, Larry, Lois, Paul, Nancy, Gregory, George, Jason and Chelsea, Dean, Ian, Karen, Char, Mary Ann, Robin Sue, Ryan, Matthew, Christy, Jim, Margaret, Kinley, Jane, Rose, Todd, Elena, Janet, John, Liz, Jan and Leo, Lee and Betty, Alex, Jane, Eric, Jim, Frank, Brenda, Megan, Becky, Meredith, Henry, Rick, Michael, Anne, James, Connie, Sean, Rich, Janice, Sylvia, Susan, Ray, Lois, and those we name now. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God, for those who are isolated during this pandemic, and those dealing with emotional and spiritual distress. Pray that they may experience God's presence and grace. I ask for prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. We pray also for those celebrating birthdays in the next few weeks, especially Carolyn Combs, Lucy Covert, Tom Grisa, Quentin Hatchett, Mike Herdrick, and Roger Everett. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. 
Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray for those celebrating anniversaries. Almighty God, giver of life and love, bless those whom you have joined in holy matrimony. Grant them wisdom and devotion in the ordering of their life together, that each may be to the other a strength in need, a counselor in perplexity, a comfort in sorrow, and a companion in joy. And so knit their wills together in your will, and their spirits in your spirit, that they may show forth your love and abide in your peace all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. 
and also with you. Let us pray. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now God's blessing be with you, Christ's peace be with you, the Spirit's outpouring be with you, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>